Hey, what's up, everybody? Dornell Dana here coming at you live and direct with our Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we got a very special episode with the one, the only Chris Poliska, the man, the myth, the legend who literally started from scratch, clueless California kid, zero mortgage experience, starting out minimum wage, started out in the ballet industry, got in the mortgage industry. I don't want to steal his thunder with his whole story, but he was bootstrapping it, uh, literally starting from scratch, big dream, small pocketbook, came from nothing to build, not just something, but went from literally zero to a hundred million in three years. Now he's got his own mortgage company with a kick-ass one officer team, a billion dollar business. That's with a B y'all for a big and beautiful billion dollar in funding volume per year business. And uh, we're just having an opportunity to share his story because I know you guys need to hear this. You need to hear how you can come from some, from nothing and build your dream life, not just your business, not just your bank account, but being able to create a beautiful life on purpose, on mission, and to be able to live a purpose-driven life, a passionate life, a prosperous life, even if you're clueless to start, even if you have a skimpy bank account, even if you got all a matter of obstacles in your way, this story is gonna absolutely obliterate all your lame excuses that you've been telling yourself why you can't live the life of your dreams. And so I'm gonna warn you in advance, this is gonna ignite you and excite you and absolutely inspire you to step up like you never have before. And so today we're gonna to talk about the phenom formula. And this is a frankly organic process that we developed over the last six, seven years that now we're encapsulating into a live event that we're gonna be telling you about later on. But to kick things off, we're just gonna share Chris's story and let that unfold. So Chris, welcome to the podcast, brother. Great to have you. Awesome, always a pleasure to, to be online with you. You're the man, you've really helped me out a lot. So. Appreciate your well, patient and uh, being a positive thinker and and uh, helping me push forward in my life. So appreciate you a lot. Well, likewise, man. Right, right back at you. And it's such a immeasurable gift and privilege and pleasure to be able to see someone come from such uh, modest and meager means with just big dreams and big hustle and big heart and to create something beautiful out of that that's uh, worthy of emulation and inspires other people to greatness. And so you uh, you feed that desire for me to continue to do what I do, you know, to see you really step up and create an extraordinary life for yourself and then be the light in the darkness to inspire others to do likewise. That's why I do what I do, brother. That's exactly yep. why I do yep. what I do. And my vision is very much entangled and enmeshed with your vision to 100%. help people step into their dreams, their best self, and to ignite people to create a legendary legacy. And so I think that's one of the reasons why our, our paths continue to cross after all these years, you know, and no matter uh, what you might uh, want to do, you ain't about to shake me off, brother, because uh, right. I got you in my heart and, and vice versa. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's huge. Helping people have their lives come true, man. That's, that's really the true fulfillment, you know, that I've, Obviously, you've been a part of helping me with with a lot of hard work and some other things, but that's really what I'm focused on. I just want to share with the world and help people achieve their lives and and really live a purpose driven life because at the end of the day, that's all we really have. Um, all the other stuff will make you happy, but at the end of the day, if you can help people and do it with a purpose and help them achieve your whys, you're ultimately going to hit your goals too in your dreams. So that's right. And anything less, frankly, you know, the money, the bank account, the cars, the house, the material things, uh, those are just fleeting happiness. You know, they just yeah. fleet, away, fleet away like a wisp of smoke. But it's that rhythm and that fiber and fabric of living a life on purpose to serve humanity and liberate people from their suffering and to have people step into their best self and to liberate them from the suck and the suffering and the strife and the stress of settling for second best that I think is really what gives a life not just on fire, not just on purpose, not just on mission, but gives you true happiness that sustains, you know, it's that joy filled happiness, not just that fleeting happiness. So I'm really stoked about sharing your story because you're an embodiment of that brother. You know, you yep, live it, yep. you breathe it. And that's one of the reasons why people will follow you and people want to be part of what you're doing because you're not just about the paycheck and stacking the bank account. You're about, really making a difference and leading by example and people feel it you know you've got that heart connection to purpose 
So why don't we kick things off right from the get go with a little bit of weight going way back a whole six years yeah. ago. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy how much you've accomplished in six years. It just boggles my mind. Uh, but let's rewind the tape to before you got in the mortgage business. Tell us about what you were doing before you got in the mortgage business and then what you what inspired you to get into this crazy industry to begin with. Yeah, so I was actually parking cars um, at Valet Parker at a, at a high-end restaurant uh, here in California, making some pretty good bucks, right? But um, I know that that was a means to an end, right? Those legs were going to run out at some time, right? So mm. ultimately, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life and just was big heart, big people's person. And uh, one of my regulars of my valets uh, or of the valet station actually approached and said, hey man, you got a great personality. You relate to people really well. Uh, you should get in the mortgage business. This this thing is real, really good. You can make a lot of money. You can help a lot of people make a lot of dreams come true, right? Um, so he ultimately convinced me to uh, get into this crazy, crazy world, the the mortgage business, right? So yeah, it started from having a conversation uh, in a parking lot, right, to eight dollars minimum wage, working both the valet job and and the uh, minimum wage job in the mortgage industry. Um, and you then, started in ops, right? You're just in uh, ops to begin with? I started with? as a customer service rep, making eight bucks an hour, just picking up phones, <laughs> um, <laughs> just trying to find my way in and and uh, follow this guy's advice. And and in the at night, I was hustling the valet car still to, to stack the bank account and try to make that work. Um, although I didn't save much over time, which is part of my story and how I've kind of changed that and done some things that, that I think will help people understand the pains and struggles that I went through during that process and, and breaking some old habits and stuff like that. But yeah, it started it started there, eight bucks an hour, started picking up phones, learning about what these things we call loans. Um, right. <laughs> and yeah, from, from there I became a loan officer, right? And uh, just- How long were you in ops before you got into uh, the front lines as a 100% commission LO? Uh, four months. I knew where okay. I wanted to go, right? I knew what side I wanted to be on and um, my risk tolerance was high, right? So I had no money in the bank account, but um, I knew my dreams, my dreams were big, right? And I wanted to accomplish my dreams early and I knew I'd be willing to put in the work to do that. Um, so yeah, I got out right away. I got what I needed. I got the basis and said, all right, I got to go figure this thing out, right? So at that point, I became a loan officer, 100% commission and uh you know, I was everywhere but nowhere, right? So um, I was out in the, everybody knew me, right? I was at every event. I was at every broker preview. I was at everything you knew. I'm like scratching my head. I'm like, well, why isn't this working, right? There was even a point mm. I called up my dad and I'm like, I don't know what's going on here, man. I'm working hard. He told me I work hard and things happen, right? And uh, mm -hmm. so um, I'm like, hmm. I sat there one day and uh, one of your messages came up on the, on I think probably Facebook. Um, and then Brenda, you know, who was my mentor, uh, who's now working with me now, um, was like, hey, let's let's check this guy out. He's from Canada. We need to do something different. And then one thing I learned when I sat there was doing it the hard way is too hard, right? You got to be countercultural to your industry, right? So mm -hmm. you doing what other people right? You want to be countercultural. That's how you build a big business. I need to do something different. I need to be countercultural to what this industry is doing. And that's when we linked up and obviously gave some strategies and I tweaked some strategies and did some different things to be different than everybody else and be countercultural. And from there, you know, I put systems in place so it wasn't beating me dead. But to be honest, um, because I just wanted, to, I wanted what we talked about earlier, share people about what my purpose is and really helping people. I had a lot of success, but I wasn't fulfilled, right? So mm. I'm into fulfillment now, right? And I did really well, and my business ran on business was never the problem with the strategies and going countercultural and doing things different than every other person out there on the street trying to get business. Uh, business wasn't the problem. I had more business than I could handle, but my life was the problem, right? Mm. I was only focused on the business and not all areas of my life, right? So I was right. making money, but I was spending money. I was not focused on all areas. Um, so I had a really good production, but my bank account really didn't start growing until I made a huge shift in my life. Right. And I focused, I focused um, on all areas of my life, right? Faith, family, fitness, wellness, business. Even if you're not a believer there, you know, whatever, whatever it is for you, if it's the universe or whatever it may be, 
it's all those combined on a daily basis that make the difference and really see you grow and, and make you happy. You know, trying to figure out what we all want happiness, right? We want freedom and happiness, right? So I had the business part where I could create the freedom with the strategies and being counterculture and doing different things, right? But I had to figure out how to get happy too, right? Um, so mm. I think it's a big shift that most people, you know, they might be big producers, but when they get hot, they turn the thermostat down, right? Because they're not happy, right? So they don't continue to move up and up and up and make right. it is really big because ultimately the more happy you are, the more successful we success we have. Right. So that was one That's big thing made is I focus on all areas of my life every day. Right. So it, I'm intent mm. my day and focusing on all areas. And it's crazy when I was only focused on the business, it, the money wasn't growing, the bank account wasn't going up. It was, it was just this and all the other things weren't coming to me. And when I focused on everything, which was a, less time on business, everything went up right so mm -hmm. i imagine that yeah right so <laughs> imagine that crazy. when you start the day right and you fuel your rocket before you get into the office and you connect with your maker and you get connected to purpose and what really matters most and you get uh really connected to the divine design of your life and you get your you know your rocket fueled up with energy because you're exercising your meta metabolism is amped up you got more energy you feel better about yourself you've got more mojo more confidence you got that swagger factor you got your cape flowing behind your shoulders and you're ready to freaking conquer the world imagine that 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 would actually make a difference in your business not to mention being able to cultivate those relationships with those you care about your wife your kids and really be on purpose to not just be a great man in the boardroom, but also to be able to be a great father and a great husband and a great leader that, you know, serves them by leading by example with love and connection and love equals time, T-I-M-E, not just, you know, a paycheck, not just a stroking checks to pay their bills. So imagine that all that stuff focusing on what really matters most actually ignited your business, ignited your life. Imagine that. I, I, always had the, I always had the fear if I took my eye off the business and focus on these other things that I wouldn't be as successful, right? And that was a big eye-opening thing for me. And I think a lot of people miss that. And that's just getting business, right? Is working smarter with some of the strategies that we do and that we've talked about, but also just taking your eye on focusing on all areas, it makes you, it makes you more authentic, right? That's going to mm. help organically build these relationships, which is ultimately going to build your business. And that's really yeah. what my passion is to share with people and give them the information and, and have them run for it. Get away from that fear, the fear that your business is going to fail or these other things. It actually yeah. focus on all of these things because authenticity is all you have. And people feel that like you said, yeah. I have a tribe, I have a movement because they feel my authenticity, right? Yes. So that's a big part of the, the puzzle Woo. of authenticity and, and being about that, right? Not just your business. Use these strategies. Be countercultural. Be, be authentic by striving for excellence in all areas of your life on a daily basis. And I'm excited to share some of those strategies at our event on what I do every day to, to hit all those areas. I'm super fired up to be able to give that knowledge to people. You and I both, brother, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I'm just feeling that, <laughs> feeling the life-changing power and potency of what you're dropping, brother, dropping some yeah. bombs that can change your life if you take them and run with them. So let's rewind the tape for a moment, okay? So you get in the business, you know, you're, you're, you're all over the place. You go into the networking events, you go into the open houses, you're doing this, you're doing that, and you're in a flurry of activity, but it's not necessarily translating into activity and productivity that actually puts dollars in your bank account. And then you get with me, with uh, your your mentor, mentor, the one and only Brenda the Lenda. She's just an absolute spark plug and a beautiful soul inside and out. And so we journeyed, we we journeyed together uh, for several years. I think about you know two and a half, three years, something like that, very closely until you really just uh, you know slipped in the jet stream and and started to rocket on your own more independently. But in the beginning, we you know we were working together probably on a weekly basis, weekly or bi-weekly yeah. for quite some time. Tell us about before we linked up, what was for you the the dark night of the soul in terms of the most painful part of the struggle for you? I mean, I know it's hard. It's like another lifetime ago, a whole six yeah. years ago. But if you're, if you're just kind of reconnect with the struggle on the front lines of real life, the front lines of capitalism, putting yeah. in all that toil and effort, not seeing the fruit, what, what was the most potently painful part of that for you? I would just say I was putting in these these 18 hour days and doing a lot of activity with no results, right? Like mm. and that 
biggest shift for me is is becoming you know coming with strategies that we talked about taking me from activity to productivity right so mm. i think huge difference a lot of loan officers a lot of people in our business do a lot of activity but they don't know how to make that activity productive and so mm. I, that was the biggest pain for me is like i was working hard i was putting in 16 17 hour days but i wasn't getting the results that i wanted to get because i was doing a lot of activity and wasn't wasn't making that activity pro productive and also just yeah i mean i think that was my biggest struggle is really mm. not that activity productive and that's really you need to do you need to be different you need to be counterculture you need to have different strategies you need to bring them to you right so you can be more productive and that's really what we focused on and built the platform um you know with your amazing strategies and me fine-tuning them and getting them getting them in the streets and and stuff like that that really helped me but that was painful i almost quit mm. i literally called my dad up i i had an accounting a little bit of an accounting background i said i think i'm gonna go sit in the cubicle pops what do you think <laughs> uh, at least i got a consistent yeah. paycheck you know yeah, i'm exactly. better off being a barista at starbucks the way it is right now at least i got some yeah. benefits and a success certain paycheck right <laughs> and, I, and i think that this is important for people to know because this is what it really takes right so i had I, at the time i was about six to seven months in where i really got this thing flowing right we got we got together in about three or four months when i was commission only in six to seven months things started clicking right at that time i had about 25 to thirty thousand dollars in credit card debt right Woo. No bank account and i was paying you i don't know like 25 three thousand dollars a month but i was willing because i wanted to win you know what mm. i mean i think that's really what it takes you got to want to win right you don't want to win don't put up the money we want to work right. with we want you know that's what that's what i want to work with i want people not no one's perfect but what what are your intentions do you want to win if you want to win i'm going to help you out right so right and there's a difference between wanting to win and being willing to put your money with your mouth is and actually right. showing up and paying the price you know anyone can yeah. talk a big game but it takes a true champion to walk the talk and right. uh when they're skin in the game that's a real test of how defiantly committed are you to your dream are you just willing yeah. to talk about it or are you willing to do whatever it takes and right. that's really the difference bet maker between the, the achievers and the mere wishers and dreamers is are they willing to go on the front lines and skin their knees and press themselves out of their comfort zone? And obviously you had that defined resolve. You were in it to win it. So you said, screw it, let's do it. And, yeah. uh, and obviously the rest is history. But tell us about the, uh, the, the initial stages of, you know, launching on on planet prosper with Dorn aldana and you know obviously you ponied up the dose or there's a big stretch there obviously you're you know a bit scared and excited at the same time because you're yeah, way out of yeah. your comfort zone uh tell me about kind of the the honest sense of your newness to this new world and the fact that your back is, is against the wall it's do or freaking die time and yeah. now you're getting this crazy, wacky Canadian telling you, you know, things that are totally countercultural, as you call them, you know, totally unconventional. Tell us about the perhaps skepticism you had behind the scene. You might have not vocalized it to me. You might have vocalized right. it to Brenda, but tell us about, you know, inside your world. What was that skepticism you had right from the start? Yeah, I'll give them the real authentic truth here. <laughs> Epic, right at the time you were you were kind of building your brand you didn't have a lot of us presence like at at this time you've gotten a lot of people a lot of results like you're one of the best in the business at getting results when it comes to mortgage marketing right but for us we were one of the first clients in right so right. the early years is, this legit or is our credit card gonna get charged we never <laughs> is he just well, gonna hey, take my money and run right <laughs> right right but and then we asked request well how important are our dreams right our dreams are really important so we, if that happens, then we're going to rock and roll with it. But um, yeah, there was definitely some skepticism um, there. But I mean, you, you could just tell by the person that you were that that you were authentic and you're real and, and you're a good person. Your intentions were right, right? I think um, a lot of us focus on an outcome rather than the intention. I really, I intend to do good, right? Like a lot of us, a lot of us beat ourselves up on our worthiness and, and, uh, whether we're imposters based on an outcome, right? Like what's your intention, right? And I really felt that from day one from our first conversation, your intention was to do good, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I skepticism, get, finding you online and and uh, being one of your, your first US clients. But I once we talked, I, I knew where your intentions were, right? And that's really when I, people called me crazy, right? Uh, they're probably still calling me crazy. I get crazy all the time, but the reality is crazy people do extra, extraordinary things in this world, right? Sure and, 
So when somebody calls you crazy, you're doing something right. And I that, that means you're on the right track. Yeah. And uh, That's right. in regards to dreams and, and taking taking those leaps and risks, you know, one thing I've been studying very successful people is they were they're all normal people. We're all normal people, right? But they have extraordinary dreams, right? So when they mm. accomplish dreams, that makes them extraordinary people, like the Kobe mm. Brown world, all these different people, right? So well, how much are you willing to pay to accomplish your dreams, right? How much are you willing to pay to be extraordinary? Do you are you talking about it or do you actually want to do it, right? So yes. uh, committed to that, right? Regardless if it was a Canadian scam or not, which it was. <laughs> you know, right? But uh, right. yeah, there was, there was a lot of skepticism uh, at the start for sure. But you hit it. You yeah, hit that's it running. And, and that's your humanity. You know, we all yep. enter enter through the, this journey of life, bringing our humanity with us. So that's why I always like to bring that up, you know, so we yep. can connect yeah. with the, the human experience. And you make a few great points, you know, that if you want to create an extraordinary life, you can't afford to have ordinary thinking. And I think a lot of people, they bring conventional wisdom into their business, thinking that that's going to create an extraordinary result. But what that does is it, it creates conventional results. Conventional wisdom produces conventional results. And so often we say things like, you know, I want to be realistic. I want to be reasonable. That's another way of saying I need to be conventional. I need to be like everyone else. And if you want to create an extraordinary life, we can't afford to think like everyone else. We can't afford to be ordinary. So I think you make a really good point. I don't want people to overlook that. If you want to create an extraordinary life, you can't afford to think like an ordinary person and be reasonable and to be realistic. That's the surest way to mediocrity, being realistic. Screw being freaking realistic. Let's create something extraordinary out of your life by having unrealistic and unreasonable dreams that are possible only when you step into the divine design that God called you to be, to step into the greatness you're called to be, to step into the extraordinary human being you're called to be. That's when extraordinary magic happens. So yeah. I love that you, uh, you highlight that, brother. What about your secret motivation? Everybody, I think, has, whether they have a family and they're out there trying to slay dragons for the family, whether they have, that, whether they have a fiance like you did at the time, um, or, uh, you know, a significant other or whatever the case is, there's always something that it may not be something you're going to, you know, scream from the rooftops, but it's an inner secret motivation that drives you, that gets you to, you know, get up early and grind late and pay the price and do whatever it freaking takes in spite of the fear of failure, in spite of the resistance, the turbulence, the storms of life and the friction points that toward our progress, there's something deep down inside that gives that, us that white hot fire burning desire to keep on keeping on. What was that secret motivation for you? Um, so there's a couple of them. Um, you know, what I want people to know is I'm just like you. Me, I'm just like you. I'm no different. I had no money in my bank account. I was overweight. I had all these, the, the person you're looking at here, I'm just like you, 100%. Mm. I'm not anything special. It took me time to get here. I had to do some different things. So I want people to understand, like I've gone through the struggles that most of you guys have gone through, right? So I think that's important to start off with what my motivation is because it mm. the pains that I've had in my life, right? So one of my biggest and secret motivations, I'm going to get a little bit vulnerable here, um, is, the, is what I call my underdog advantage, right? Like my whole life, people told me I wouldn't be anything. People told me I couldn't achieve success. Starting off from when I was eight years old, I was overweight, right? Most of you guys saw my picture, have seen my picture in some sort of a thing. Um, I got back to being overweight. And when I got back on track with all areas of my life, which I talked about a little bit earlier, um, I, I lost 95 pounds and I've kept that up because I'm focusing daily on all areas of my life. But incredible. When I was a little kid, I was overweight and uh, I, was, I was playing baseball and some kid called me fat and I punched him in the stomach, right? Um, and so there's this big thing at the little league board and they wanted to kick me out of the league. I was a great baseball player. Um, and you know, I was, I was, I was broken. Basically they told me I was a troublemaker, right? Because some kid called me fat because of my weight and uh, I punched him in the stomach cause he deserved it. Right. <laughs> but, um, so I was at this, I was at this board where they're trying to kick me out of the league where my dad's got to do a testimony and all these different things. I'm sitting out there as an eight year old little kid. And, uh, Basically, they're they're telling me that you know I'm never going to amount to nothing, and uh, that those themes have happened my whole life, right? Like at this point in my life, like I've done pretty well, but my my dreams keep getting bigger. But I always use my underdog advantage. Has somebody told you that you're not going to be worth anything in your life? I use that every morning when I get up. 
them that told me I'm going to be a troublemaker. I'll never play Division One college football. Every I, all throughout my life, I wake up and I go because I know I'm going to not. I don't. I don't need to prove anybody wrong, but I use that as my fuel if that makes sense, right? Like, right. Yes. That's, I can do something here. I can leave a legacy, right? And then my family ties into that. Like I really want to make a difference. When like when Kobe Bryant left, the whole world cried. Like yeah, it's about man. Like, and I'm not going to lie. The cars, all that. Those will make you happier in the short term, right? But I'm not going to lie. A nice car, a nice – those will make you happier. So people that, that talk down on people who have that, as long as they have good intentions and they're, and they're making progress in the world, you can have both, right? You can have good intentions, make a legacy, help people, and have that, right? And so I want to make that clear that, that I think that's important too. Those will make you happier. But that's my that's – my, I, I call it my, the underdog advantage, right? Those stories mm. – had that fuel me every day, but also my family and and uh, just leaving a legacy for them and and having a Kobe Bryant like legacy and making a difference in the world and really that's that's what wakes me, gets me to wake up every day is is uh, is that and then just also everybody who, who I have here to serve in, in my company right I lead by example I still originate I still I wake up at three thirty like I'm leading these people by example and that's what motivates me is I'm no different than them. I have the same body. I have everything the same, right? They see me doing it, and that's really how I, I want to inspire people. So I would say those are my three secret motivations. Um, but I think a lot of people can relate to the underdog advantage, and people don't tell them they're not worthy or, or they'll never amount to nothing in their life. I use that as fuel every day. I use it in a positive way, not a negative way, which is important, right? So, uh, Yeah, and there's something about your story when you share from the heart like you just did about the underdog advantage and – the naysayers and the people that, you know, were fanning the flame, your weak self instead of your winner self and putting a label on you that you'll never amount to anything. There's something that's so visceral. It's like, you know, again, goosebump worthy where it just, it has the, the, the spirit of defiant resolve, just rise up and say, you have no idea who you're talking about. You're not right. about to put a cap on my potential. You know, right. I'm a child of the almighty God. I was designed exactly. for greatness, you know, and so just having that that uh, fuel in your rocket that comes from not necessarily proving the naysayers wrong, but to say, you know what, ain't nobody, no, no human label is going to put a cop cap on my destiny, on my potential, on my future, on my legacy. I decide that. In fact, better than yet, better than I decide that if you're a believer in God, it's God decides it. And I just align right. myself with truth of how God, my creator says i'm fearfully and wonderfully made need him yeah, I, for a special plan and a special purpose when you align with that truth ain't nothing going to stop you and i think that's i think that's a big a big thing for me like i am a believer like i live a purpose-driven life I, god's dreams are bigger than my dreams whether you're a believer or not but i am and so that's a huge driving factor for me waking up every morning i go to work to win to help people and live a purpose-driven life and that's a huge factor for me anybody who gets in my way of winning is, is getting in the way of God's dreams, in my opinion, right? So I don't allow that to happen. I control how I win every day. And and that's a big part. My faith is a big part of, of my motivation at this point. It always wasn't, right? I wasn't always there. But um, through through this process and everything I've kind of shared with everybody today, it has been uh, the, the number one reason in my life, right? I start with that. Obviously, faith, family, fitness, wellness, business, it's in that order for a reason. Mm. I love and I, I love the evolution I've seen in you because I, I I saw you when you were just this young kid, 20 years old, 21 years old, just this coolest kid with all this vim and vigor and bright eyed and bushy tailed, you know, and you had pep in your step and sparkle in your eye and you had these big dreams uh, and you were like the the diamond in the rough and, you know, you had some, uh, some kinks to iron out and, you know, you had some maturation to evolve into and it's beautiful to see you you know, putting God first in your life and, and living a life that is not just about proving the naysayers wrong. Cause there's only so far you can go because right. there's always, there's always that subjective sense that, Oh, did I do enough to prove them wrong? You know? Right. And so that becomes a trap in and of itself. You can, you can become yeah. a guinea pig in the guinea pig wheel and you, you, you're never fulfilled, but you've aligned yourself with the divine design for your life and, and got connected to what really matters. That's eternal. And when you do that, man, it's like, the life-changing impact that it has in, in the people that you touch is 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 you know immeasurable. It's like anyone can count the amount of seeds in an apple, but only God yeah. can count the amount of apples that can come from one seed. You know, right. through the ripple effect, that butterfly effect. So it's inspiring to see, man. And uh, I'm just uh, really blessed to to be part of that in some small way. Tell us about 
the uh, surprising results. Let's fast forward a little bit. So you you did you gave it the skeptical try. You're like, okay, I'm poning up this do this dough. I might as well you know do it and you know see if it actually yeah. works. <laughs> Tell us about the journey in terms of how that unfolded, the kind of results you got in the first three years, and and uh, and then we'll talk about where you're at now. Yeah, no, it. Um, I mean the results happen quick, right? Like it's just about putting in the work, right? You had the strategies, but you also got to put in the work to implement those strategies, right? And I think that's huge. But I mean, after after I decided to go in from activity to activity with productivity, I mean, it was a matter of months before this thing kicked off and, and it was rocket a rocket going up to space, right? So um, I think, yeah, from that perspective, it happened really fast. I would say within 90 days of switching up um, how I approach people, how I approach business and doing it smarter, not harder um, within 90 days. And then I really haven't seen it go down since. Right. So it's been on the on the up and up. That rocket's somewhere past the moon at this point. But oh, yeah. Talk we'll about go going stratospheric. <laughs> yeah. Stratos <laughs> stratospheric on steroids is what I like yeah. to call it. Yeah. So, and so yeah. tell us about the uh, the evolution in terms of results. As far as I recollect, you know, the first year you did like somewhere around 30 million. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and, and his first year was zero mortgage experience, guys. 30 million. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, your second year, and that was with three months doing it the hard way, three or four months doing it the hard way too. So you right. can imagine if we started from day one, you know, you would have been more close to 40 was, or 50. On the operation side, that was with no no full-time assistant. That was just me doing the marketing strategies with right. Lee and trying to do them all myself, right? Do everything myself on the- Chief, chief cook and bottle washer, wearing all the hats, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then uh, second year, what was it like around 70 million? Yeah. So the second year, I pretty much- doubled in a half. Um, I got some some systems in place on the operation side and some support. The, um, with the strategies, the leads weren't an issue, right? It was just managing the leads at that point. So I got smarter on putting those systems in place. Um, and then, yeah, year three, I, I hit the hit the, uh, the good old Benjamin, right? So, um, and, and I'll be honest, I had a little bit regress based on what I told you of not living a purpose-driven life and um, I'll get real vulnerable drinking too much and doing some different things, not saving money. Hey, is this really worth it? If I don't have $0 in my bank account, I just want to stress how important this is. Right. Yeah. So I fear of regression and then I went back on track. Right. So and 90, 90 pounds overweight. Yep. Yep. So that yeah. year I, uh, um, I didn't have much regression as far as volume. Business was always good. Leads weren't the problem, but I didn't grow one year from year three to four. Um, to, to be completely honest, because I had gotten up to 312 pounds. Um, I had no money in my bank account still, very little. Um, and so I had to make that shift, right? So that's my whole thing is when you get started on these strategies, you got to start with everything, right? If you really want to supercharge this and make your dreams come true sooner, um, that's an important part of my story that I like to share is is that shift in 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 the mind, body, and spirit. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes we got to take a step back uh, before we can take some steps forward, you know, because when we succeed, we tend to party, as Tony yeah. Robbins says. But when we <laughs> fail, we tend to ponder. And it's in that pondering that we get new distinction and new muscle and new clarity to be able to take that next leap of growth. So uh, that was all part of your incubation and your evolution for sure. And so tell us about where you're at today, six years later now. Uh, from the day you got in this business, uh, light years ahead of where you started, absolute avalanche of awesome is unleashed in so many areas of your life, personally, professionally, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. Tell us about, uh, just give us some of the highlights of uh, what's happened since uh, that fateful day six years ago, getting in this business and, and uh, you know, what you've been able to create since. Yeah, so I, I decided um, I worked for a big company forever, a great company um, from years three to four that I really wanted to start something that uh, had a had a purpose that I could have control over. Right. So I established total quality lending and we're a purpose driven company. Right. So uh, we're about helping people in all areas of life and giving back and and making a difference and doing all these me helping other loan officers and other people achieve their whys. Right. Uh, through a purpose driven life. That's really my passion. Um, so yeah, we're on track to do a billion this year. I'll do another hundred million in personal production. Uh, this Amazing. Year. Um, and we've been, we've been doing this for about a little, a little less than a year, right? So, um, we got the platform set up similar to what we had before to make sure we had all the product and all the different things to still supercharge the business. Right. So 
um, that was fun. But yeah, it's been an amazing journey and everybody who's been involved has been super helpful, including you and all my mentors and everybody. And, but yeah, we're, 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 we're not slowing down anytime soon. Oh, you're just getting warmed up, baby. Just scratching yeah. the surface to the surface. No doubt about it. And what's really cool to see is because you're leading by example and you're an authentic leader leading from the heart, it's really cool to see how people who are peers and colleagues and even supervisors and managers in your previous career getting started are now joining your team and being part yeah. of the, the mission and being yeah. part of you know the, the movement of what you've created. And that's just a testament to your leadership and uh, your humility and the fact that you lead from the front and inspire them to greatness leading by example. So that's yeah, really I, amazing. I think that, you know, the big thing is that we all need to be lifetime students, right? I've always had a coach my whole life, pretty much like we, we have a lot to learn in a small time to get there. Right. And that mentality is really what I embody. Right. And this is why the, a lot of people that are my peers and managers respect me because I, I'll never I'll, I can learn, you can learn something from everybody, right? And that's the mentality that really separates you um, from from ordinary to extraordinary is being a lifetime student, right? Um, so mm. I think that's important too. And part of just what you kind of said is I try to embody every day is, is I pick something up from everybody, whether that's a guy at, at McDonald's or that's, uh, mm. that's worth a billion dollars. I'm picking up something from everybody. I can learn from everybody. And I think that's, that's something that um, some people struggle with, but is really important in my opinion. Yeah, and again, that's just the uh, the abundance of the heart spills over in our speech, and that is yes. a, a, a sign, the fruit of humility, and that is a quintessential trait of a great leader, someone who's humble and can learn from anybody and can take correction when they misstep, and to you know take extreme ownership when they make a uh, you know a flawed judgment or they make a mistake they take full ownership and extreme ownership of that and then when the team succeeds they give all the credit and all the praise to their team and again you're a you're a huge um you know proponent of that way of being as a leader and that's one of the reasons why people follow you and and uh more and more top talent continues to come to your team in droves so uh, if you guys are looking by the way this is an unsolicited plug if you're looking for a winning team to uh, you know, latch on to, connect with, and be part of a purpose, a mission bigger than just doing loans and making money, where you're touching hearts and changing lives, and being part of a movement and momentum that's heart connected to purpose to make a difference in the world. You definitely want to check out Total Quality Lending with Chris Pliska because these guys are blowing up. Mark my words, these guys will be the mo one of the most, if not the most, successful lending company in. US of A, and if he comes to Canada, he'll dominate in Canada too, because of the leaning by example, heart connection to leadership, to purpose, and the fact that they don't quit, man. They got too much grit to quit, and they got a fire in their belly to, to really make a difference in people's lives, not just for a paycheck, but to literally lib liberate people into their dreams and their goals and to, to set them free from their suffering in meaningful ways. We see that with what you do. Uh, the post you you did today on Facebook about uh, yeah. going down to Skid Row and helping yeah. helping people who are down out. Tell us, tell us, uh, give us a quick uh, glimpse into what you do there in terms of helping the down and out people that are suffering on the streets. Yeah, you know what? We just came to we donated about three hundred coats um, for people, and we came down there. It was our first time at the LA Mission. Um, we're trying to really find a few different people to work with, but I want to be boots on the ground in the streets, right? I don't want to just cut checks. I'll do the checks, but I want to actually make a difference. And it was really cool. It was eye opening. They actually put these people through a program. They don't only just feed them, but they bring them in off the street and they have a holistic approach, which is what I'm about. They, they have a Bible study. There's a church there. Um, they help them get a job. They make them work out because all these areas like even from the bot, this is why this is so important. It was eye opening to me because this is what changed my life, right? Um, if they're doing it from people on the street and they're changing people on the street that have drug addiction, um, that have been on the street for a long time, but they say it doesn't work unless they do the whole program, right? It doesn't work. Right. They do. They they change all areas of their lives. So we're working hand in hand with them. Um, actually, we're gonna we're gonna start working with them boots and boots in the streets and and uh, helping do some faith things over there, uh, donating some things. I'm also going to be speaking over there to uh, they have a program through graduates and telling my story. Um, so awesome. we're a lot with them and actually be boots in the streets. I'm even going to go out on skid row with some of the leaders and and uh, try to bring some people off the streets. So I'm fired up about that. You know, I really, 
really want to make a difference and, and I just don't want to cut a check, but I want to be out there and lead by example when it comes to making a difference too, not just in my business. So I love it, man. This is the abundant life that uh, we were promised from above. the abundant life that's full of peace and joy and purpose. And uh, you, you spur me on, man. You inspire me. It's so to have it be full circle where when I started out working with you, I was the inspirer and the, the equipper. And now you're inspiring and equipping me and spurring me on to that next level of contribution and impact. So I just uh, so appreciate you, man. Uh, I, I love you. I appreciate you. I respect you. And uh, I'm just honored to be part of uh, your journey and, and to continue to be part of your journey. And uh, to speak of that, you know, I think that's a, a perfect uh, opening for one of the reasons why we were inspired to do this podcast because we've done this podcast before, but this is the latest and greatest for 2020. And uh, it was inspired really by us putting our heads together and saying, okay, you are on mission to help people achieve their dreams and goals, to liberate people from their suffering, to serve humanity in a, in a very purpose-driven way. I share that sentiment. I share that mission too. So naturally, we always had that kind of percolating, like how could we work together on a higher level? And, and then of course, just recently, we decided to say, you know what? It just only makes sense that we team up and we put on an event where we inspire people to greatness and we have people step into their winner self and their champion self and their dream self and to shed the lies that hold them back, living a small life of suffering and settling. And uh, so we decided to launch this, uh, this event. It's the first time we've ever done it. It's a historic inaugural event. We have no idea if it's just going to fizzle out or if it's take flight and ignite, but we're like, screw it, let's do it. Let's just put it out there and see what happens. So we decided to launch our first ever seminar together, one day full event training called the Phenom Formula. It's going to be on March 18th, 2020 in the Dana Point uh, Laguna Beach area, beautiful Southern California, suffering in the sun. Yeah. So it has to be you if you come join us. You'll have to suffer in the sun for a day or two. Uh, and we're just uh, going to unleash everything in our hearts and our souls that we believe will make a difference in your life in one life transforming rock your world event in one day. Tell us a little bit, Chris, um, what you, you know, if someone's uh, sitting on the fence right now and they're thinking about, mm, sounds interesting. I, I like, I like what uh, they're, they're putting down. I'm, I'm digging you know, what they're, uh, what they're sharing, but I'm not hundred percent certain it's worth the flight or the, the drive or the trip or the expense. What can someone expect to get out of this event? If they choose to say, screw it, let's do it and pony up whatever expense is required to be there. Um, well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna make their dreams come true. I'll tell you that because we're going to get real vulnerable and share all the strategies that have not only one from a production standpoint, uh, built a billion dollar mortgage business, which you've had a part of um, on your marketing strategy. So thank you for the plug. Um, you've been a part of that journey, brother, and this wouldn't be here unless you were a part of that. So I appreciate you. Um, so they can expect all those strategies. I'm willing to give them all out, no holding back, right? It's up to you to go in and implement them. And we're, we're not really doing this for, for a lot of money, right? We're doing this to really help people, as you can see. And uh, also just getting real vulnerable and sharing some some day-to-day -day strategies on uh, what I do day in and day out to live a purpose-driven life and move my business forward and continue to keep the rocket going up to the moon, right? Um, I think a lot of people get stuck in the same place. So we're going to share all the strategies on the business side, on the personal side, get real vulnerable and, and hopefully help people work through their next level and not, not hope. I know we will, right? So um, that's what they can expect is to get everything, all the secrets, not holding anything back. We're going to give it all to you. Uh, for very, very nominal uh, charge, to be honest, that this is this is million dollar data, mm -hmm. it, eight billions of dollars. So or you're gonna chase billion dollar data. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, million dollar data from our brains that are gonna come out to you, and we're gonna share, and we're gonna hold nothing back. Um, so they can expect to get a lot of strategy on the business side, but also the personal side because both of those have to get get intact with each other. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just piggyback on that to say we're very cognizant of the fact that there's only so much you can take in if we give you a sip of the fire hose. So we're going to be very intentional and purposeful about giving you just what you need to unlock the floodgates of awesome in your life and to unleash you from the limitations that are keeping you stuck and the constraints and self-imposed prisons that you may be putting yourself in 
unwittingly, we're going to really work on unlocking you and unleashing you to step into your best self, your champion self, your winner self. And we're going to do it elegantly. And we're going to do it in a way that is literally fun, but also scary as hell at the same time. So if you're looking to be coddled in your comfort zone, do not come to this event. It will press you out of your comfort zone. Chances are like you've never experienced before, but it's going to step you into your breakthrough like you've never experienced before as well. So if that sounds like something that is divinely designed for you and you feel like, man, this is the time I'm done with doing it the hard way. I'm done with spinning my wheels. I'm done with getting in my own way. I'm done with settling for second best. I'm done with banging my head against that glass ceiling. And you just feel like there's no accident while you're watching this or listening to this. And you feel like, man, I need to be at this event. I don't know why I feel that way, but I just know it. When If you feel that feeling, you need to honor that feeling because I believe there are no accidents and you're listening to us for a reason. And so what you need to do is you need to go to phenomformula.com. And I went to public school, so my spelling ain't so good. But as far as I can tell, the spelling on that is P-H-E-N-O-M, formula, phenomformula.com. And opt in on that page to watch that uh, overview video for the event and book yourself in for the event. We've got a absolutely insane discount going on right now until the 4th of March. It's a Gino worth every penny to attend this event after March 4th. Absolutely worth every penny 10x that plus the travel expenses. I mean, we're talking 15 years in the game on the front lines of capitalism, coaching more mortgage pros on how to create breakthroughs than any other mortgage coach that I'm aware of to double, triple, quadruple their business and a billion dollar producer who hit a hundred million in three years, guys. You're never gonna get two guys who've got the download of awesome all in a potent display of wisdom inducing, life transforming injection of awesome than you will at this event in one full day. And uh, we're gonna knock it down for the first 100 people to attend to just a hundred bones. I know it sounds ridiculous. It seems like we're basically <laughs> giving it away. And frankly, yeah. we are. Right? And the reason why we're doing that is because this is our first event. We want to kick it off with a bang. We want to get your rate of review testimonial so we can promote the next event. We want to create a movement of transformation. We want to create a movement of having people be unleashed from their suffering, liberated from their suffering and stepping into their greatness, stepping into their dreams and being light warriors in this world to do likewise, just like I did for Chris. And now he's a light warrior transforming lives every single day. We want to do that in your life. We want to have the ripple effect that has happened in Chris's life, happened in your life. You create a legendary legacy, touching hearts and changing lives. So we're saying, let's pull the money situation out of the picture. Just a hundred bones, just to reserve your seat so that we know you're in it to win it. You're gonna show up so we can plan ahead and we can you know, actually know you're gonna be at the event. But we're basically giving our time away for free. And we're doing it because we're heart connected to purpose to change your life. So if you wanna be part of that, we're going to be doing it with or without you. You want to be part of this, be part of history. Join us, phenomformula.com, phenomformula.com. Get yourself registered. And if you can't figure out a way to come up with 100 bones to transform your life, you're not ready to transform your life. Just saying. Anything you want to add to that, Chris, before we sign off? I think you hit it on the head, man. I'm fired up to deliver a lot of value and, and, and purpose at this event and, and really hope people take advantage of this. So, um that's yeah. That's all I got. You hit it head on what we're what we're trying to do. So, uh, appreciate you, brother, and look forward to uh, transforming a lot of lives on on uh, here in March. Yes, March eighteenth, Phenom Formula, y'all. Book your seat and looking forward to seeing there, seeing you there in sunny California. And yeah. uh, Chris, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your heart to serve. Thank you for the grit and the hustle and everything that you've pressed yourself through to become all that you're called to be. And I know you're just scratching the surface of the surface. So I'm excited to see what's next and be part of the ride with you, brother. So appreciate you. I love you. And uh, look forward to seeing you in Southern California as well, brother, in your backyard, baby. That's right. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Thorne Aldana with Chris Poliska, Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And uh, again, book your seat, phenomformula.com. We'll see you soon in sunny California. Peace.